Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Sorry I haven't done a video in such a long time. Um, I had a bit of a family issue uh, to deal with over the last sort of month or so and uh, I've, I've got all that sorted out now. Um, now I've been flying this little quad uh, around the garden as you can see it's covered in horrible dirty grass stains from landing the garden and I'm really good. I, I really am pleased at how easy uh, this is to fly. I've, I've been in normal mode sport mode fast mode whatever they call it kind of thing the one mode i haven't been in yet though is manual mode uh, i've had a try with it and i can do a flip yes i did a flip in the garden but then it landed on the grass because you need to be quite high up to do a flip um but otherwise literally around the garden absolutely no issues now i've not had uh the cojones to go out into a big field yet because it is only a small quad i need to find somewhere and i will do and i will do a video on that when i finally get outside to fly it um, but I can chunk through six batteries in is up the half an hour. It's very addictive. Now that's not about this video is not about this quad. This video is about an issue that I had. All right, and it was caused by myself. Yes, uh, like a bloke, I thought, okay, I've done all the flying now. So I've seen videos where they said, oh, connect it to your computer and you can change your rates and tilt rates and all this kind of thing. I thought, okay. So I went on the web, and I found this: the Beta FPV Configurator Program. Um, don't be fooled um, it's a bit of a faff so let's just have a quick look at it so it has two sections it has the uh, control section for the controller the gimbal thing and you can also change it to uh, flight controller board now I was clicking this button connect and it's just popping up this error message about firmware and all kinds of things and I've had to click on unable to find serial port read all the instructions and install various drivers so hopefully now if I click connect just going to interrupt myself here. Um, what you're about to see is uh, this configurator tool. Now, I got it to work the once on my YouTube Studio PC, and everything works fine. As you can see, I've done the recording for it. But since then, I can never get it to reconnect. Uh, it works fine on my laptop, but not in my studio. Um, and, and I don't know why. It's the same. I just plug it in, it should work. So if you get this tool, and you get this box pop up that says, um, serial port not found flash firmware um, and you can work out how to get it to work every time then please do let me know it should there we go go into the right page uh, this basically just gives you information about your quad you can calibrate the accelerometer calibrate the magnetometer reset settings reset z-axis offset degree whatever that means all the information here uh, serial number update newer firmware or comes that further down the video uh, flight control, the firmware version, build time, etc. You can also, on the side panel here, go into receiver. No idea what that does. You can test your motors, or you can test them all at once. PID tuning and rate profile settings. Something I'm going to look at because I'm quite interested in what they are. And just the sensors for the quads so as the quad moves around. So do the sensors. I'll just show you if I wiggle it a bit. You can see them all changing kind of thing. So if I just click up on disconnect for a second. There's also the firmware flasher and it tells you there you pick Cetus Pro and then you pick the firmware again I'll come to that later in the video um, and they're pretty much the same for the controller uh, let me just disconnect the quad and I shall show you the controller there we go there's the controller plugged in let me go back to welcome change to active configurator for radio if I click on connect to RC uh, in here you have your mode switch and unit type, radio module, hardware version, firmware version. Not much you can change here. You can't change any of this Express LRS stuff because I don't think it's using it. But down here you can see your stick. So if I move the, oh yeah, there you go. If I move the sticks up and down, you can see they move, etc., etc. And you can also test all your switches. That's it. So there's actually a spare channel there. I think which is channel five. Um, that's it. You can turn the buzzer on and off. That's the noise it makes when the controller turns on and off. And there's something called a joystick dead zone. No idea what that is. Uh, you can factory recess it. Now um, you can also flash the firmware. So if I just choose disconnect, and I go into firmware flasher, uh, you wait till it loads up. It tells you which one it is there. Uh, I think mine's that one. And then your firmware is all there. Um, and then you just basically load the firmware and flash it. It's as simple and as easy as that. Good tool, uh, but it has caused me an issue. I'll explain now. So the end result was, once I'd finished playing with it, um, if I go to arm it like that, the motors would just spin briefly and stop. Um, 
so it only arms if you pull this stick down right? which means that normally it wouldn't arm if the throttle was in the full position uh, so you think obviously mode one so you go on the on the fc uh, on the uh, configurator program and you make the relevant change and then you try it again and it still does the same thing so you swap the mode round and things don't work and i can't get into the program for these goggles they just don't seem to everything's messed up uh it's taken me four days head scratching trying etc uh with no luck so in the end i reached out to b pv support i sent them a video of what the issue is and i give them credit they were so quick with the response bear in mind they're america i'm in the uk and the response apparently is this um i have changed the mappings i didn't change these just going to interrupt myself because after i did this part of the video i realized what was causing this and it's this button here the factory reset button if you click that it changes all the inputs to something that doesn't match yours which is a bit strange i don't know why clicking that would change things around but it did and that was the problem with it so whether plugging it in then decided to reassign whatever it was i don't know but if this fixes it which i'm now going to do on camera uh, i'll be really happy and i will not touch that fc configurator program it's of no use to me so let's go back to the cam here and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the controller i'm going to grab my lead i'm going to plug it in you should hopefully hear the computer make a, a did ink noise right, let's go back to this screen here and then minimize that down so you see it says uh, click to activate configurator for radio so we're going to click on that and then we have to click on connect rc which is there like that and then it says connecting once it's connected you can see it's set to mode one because i was playing with mode one but you can also now see uh, that throttle roll pitch and yaw don't match the picture it should be roll pitch throttle and yaw so i'm going to change it to roll pitch throttle and yaw so roll pitch uh throttle and your okay roll pitch throttle and i'm also going to change this to mode two okay then i'm going to save it and i'm going to reboot it so i'm going to click on save and reboot you've got to wait for the double chime and then if we go into here and click on okay and connect the rc again we should now see roll pitch throttle your and it's in mode two Hopefully, uh, that's fixed the issue. So what we're going to do is we're going to unplug it. We are going to put a battery into the uh, into the quad. This is a fresh battery, I think. If not, I've got five more somewhere. Okay, we're going to power that on. Wait for the little lights to stop flashing. I'm going to turn on this controller. And it's gone blue. Now, fingers crossed, when I flick this switch, motor's on. Oh, there we go. And um, throttle a little bit. See, it's still only halfway. It's normally, is, it, it's like there's a complete dead zone on the stick here. So, I'll tell you what, hang on a second. Yeah, there's absolutely no power still in the... Uh, in the in, in the, the quad that, that normally would as soon as i just move the stick a little bit that'd be like whoa it's like you've also got to go right to the middle so you can see the stick it's in the middle now and there's no increase until you get to about there and that's that position on the stick so i'm going to go back to the support and say it seems to be better but it's not 100 percent better now but one thing i couldn't do uh, was get into the menu so I'm going to turn the goggles on. I want to see whether now this lets me get into the menu. So bear with me a second whilst I just... You're supposed to be able to move the stick to the left and up. There we go. I can get to the menu now. So it's seeing the sticks right, but there's a lot of dead zone on this stick. So I'm going to go back to uh, support again now. And I'll continue this video when I get a message back from support. Um, so yes, I went back to support, as I said. And... Uh, their reply was it seems there's a problem with the remote control for such problems we have a 30-day warranty period check your order it seems you've exceeded the, the warranty period um, and they want to offer me 50% off a new remote control uh, we'd like to hear your suggestion 
<laughs> so this was my suggestion. Uh, hi, your software caused the issue. It was fine until I plugged it into the configurator tool. I'm sorry, but no, I don't expect to have to buy a new controller for an issue caused by faulty or badly written software. It's fair enough. Have you got links to the correct firmware for the controller? Let's try that first. If that doesn't work, we'll discuss other options. So they sent me uh, a link for the firmware for the controller. I tried that. It still doesn't work. Um, so I sent a video to them basically showing um, the configurator tool and the fact that when this moves, you can see it move back and forth in the tool, which suggests that this is transmitting everything correctly. So um, I said to him, you know, as far as I can see, I'm not going to buy a new one of these because it may very well not be this. It could be something else. Got a reply back. I can't argue with you. The, the, the support is fantastic. I'll give them that much. Um, it said, uh, will the same problem occur when flying in S mode and M mode? If the same problem does not occur, it indicates that the sensor of the flight controller has failed. If I put the goggles into um, either S mode, which is sport, and I then arm the quad, and I move the stick ever so slightly, and the same if I put it into M for manual mode, you can see on the screen down there. If I arm it, move the stick a touch, and it takes off. So that means that the email they've sent me, uh, which says that um, it'll be a sensor issue, uh, the flight controller has failed. That's exactly what's happened. Uh, it's three months out the box, when they flown in the garden. Um, so I've emailed back and I've said to them, yes, uh, it works fine in S mode and M mode, not S and M mode, as I said earlier. So now I, I now again wait for a response to my email. Okay, so it's now been um, three weeks um, since I uh, started this issue with uh, the, the quad not working properly and uh, I've got a reply today. Um, bear in mind it's been six days since I contacted uh, about the issue last and this is it. Um, so this is a reply. Uh, Hi sir, so it looks like there's something wrong with the sensor. No actual say what's wrong with the sensor. Um, so you can fly normally in S mode and M mode. M mode will enable the sensors, but S mode and M mode won't. So you can fly normally in S and M modes. What does what does that even mean? What? It looks like there's something wrong with the sensor. It's three months old. But there's something wrong with the sensor. Kind of, uh, kind of lost confidence. Um, if you've sold a product that I've flown for just under three months and something fails on the main board, um, you think you want to sort of, I don't know, sort it out. Not giving up though, uh, I did send one more email uh, to um, Beach FPV, this is the email. Uh, I did a video of the quad not flashing up properly when you, you apply all the cables and stuff. And... Uh, 12 days has gone past they've not answered. I guess that means that they just don't want to help. They've got a 30 day warranty, which I think is really piss poor for any kind of company. Um, and I could probably chase them through, I don't know, but it's just not worth it in the end to me. I've just, I've reached end of my tether with them. So I've decided uh, that now is the time to move on. And I have this, which I've just picked up. Uh, fully working, it just needs a VTX and a camera system. Uh, is it VTX? No. A, a, a receiver, so I should say. Let's put that in frame there so you can see it. Uh, 4S um, ESCs, motors. No, I know nothing about it. It does work. Uh, and I'm not going to start building this. Uh, I can use the existing uh, controller uh, with this, I believe. So, again, learn the experience. So, the next video I'll bring you will be me actually getting this together and testing the motors out, etc., on the bench. But as far as the Beach FPV Seaters Pro has gone, that's it for me. Um, I've washed my hands of it. It's a good little toy, uh, but don't expect any help if it stops working.